Hello, I'm Grubfist, and I would like to walk you through the village in Tribes of Midgard. First, the area we start, this is uh, the Sanctuary. This is where you go to select your Saga quest. And then outside the uh, village, we've got three buildings. The closest one here is the farm, so let's look at that. All of these three exterior buildings will supply you important resources, so... Since they do it once per day, you want to uh, build them pretty quickly. We've got the farm here, which will cost 600 souls, 12 wooden board, 9 cut stone, and 6 wrought iron. It's important to note that this price is the same for all of these three exterior delivery buildings. They start their timer immediately upon being built, and exactly one in-game day from when they were built they will deliver items, and then winning game day from that delivery, they will deliver more items. So they, they keep giving you delivery. This is what the quarry looks like here. You've got the, uh, the almost barn looking building or shed looking building with the, uh, the rocks inside. Then you've got the lumber yard over there with the tree. And then you've got the farm over there with the animal skin. And then that's uh, that crown there is the, the Bifrost that you exit through at the end of the game. Um, the quarry will give you stone and metal and cut stone and wrought iron. And the lumberyard will supply wood and planks. And the farm will give you all kinds of potion ingredients and also yarn, which you'll generally need for your uh, later game armors. So you want to build all three as fast as possible. Depending on your needs. And then of course you've got the defenses. Uh, there are three gates around the village. This icon here is what, uh, this gray icon with an obviously closed gate is what a gate looks like when it is closed. And then this southern gate, which I've just opened here, you can see it's white and the icon has changed to show that the gate is open. These little white dots are the icon you have when a tower has not yet been built. You've got archer towers, two of them uh, at each gate. These can be built, they start at level 0 and they can be built up to level 3. The gates start at level 1 and can be built up to level 3. You can see, uh, costs to upgrade them, which will increase with each level. In addition, you've got four vendors. You've got Borghild, the armorer, in the bottom right. She's who you uh, talk to if you want to craft any shield or armor. You've got Steinar, the weaponsmith, up here. In the top right. Hello. He's where you uh, go to get any kind of, uh, any kind of swords or axes, or hammers, or bows, or spears. Say, say. Go-to guy for weapons. Up in the very top, she's not a vendor, but this is Dagny the Seeress. If you uh, activate her, she will do a pulsing AoE heal, which will then go on cooldown for two minutes. It's enough to bring any player to full health, provided they were there at the very start. Uh, behind Dagny, you've got the quest board, where you get your quests to earn quest fragments in addition to fast-tracking some gear items. And behind her inside the building, you've got the golden altar, where you can spend golden horns to get random runes. The price will go up every time you use it, and the rune you receive will be completely random. So, gamble with care. And then, as far as the left side vendors go, you've got Arun the Tinker. She's where you craft tools, uh, constructions, arrows, and uh, convert some ingredients into other ingredients, sometimes more advanced ingredients, but other times just different ingredients, like turning flint into stone and stone into flint. And then the bottom left vendor is Olvir the Trapper. He is the consumables vendor. You go visit him. 
uh, if you would like to craft food, or health potions, or traps. Or any kind of potion, sorry. Any kind of potion or traps. Now, all of these vendors, if you activate them with the upgrade button, they are upgraded purely with souls. 250 to get to level 2, since they start at level 1. 500 to get to level 3. 1000 to get to level 4. And 1500 to get to level 5, which would be their maximum level. Now, on the left side, you've got the Village Shrine, which is the only shrine that starts activated and will be the hub of your fast travel network. It can teleport to any shrine you've activated out in the world, which will look the same as this golden icon, this golden star icon, except that they will be gray until you activate them, at which point they will turn golden like this one. Uh, behind Dagny there is also a war horn, rallying horn here, you can blow to let people know that you need help defending. It's a very quick way to alert people, flashes on the map there, and let them know that they need to come back and defend their village until sunrise. Now on the middle right side we've got the repair bench, which you use to repair any item. You can press shift to repair all, or whatever button down here you see for your control scheme. Or you can individually repair items with the tabs. Repairing always just costs souls and nothing else. And then you've also got the war chest. This is an often overlooked uh, item in the village. You want to dump all your resources here. You can again press the all button, which for me is shift, and it'll ena enable a place all button, which will dump your whole inventory. So you want to come here, open, place all, leave. Takes a second, right? That will allow crafting inside the village. Everywhere inside the village, all these vendors can pull from the war chest to craft items. In addition to the three exterior delivery buildings, you've got a fourth one, which conveniently is actually close by. It will always be located on the nearest beach to the village. It is the dock. Now this is an important building for the Season 2 Saga Quest to defeat Jormungandr. It's crafted with uh, different ingredients from the delivery buildings, uh, and it has multiple tiers because there's three tiers of boats you can craft. Just collect some sticks here and I'll show you. See, here's the shipyard or dock, or whatever you want to call it. And it takes souls, wooden boards, wrought iron, and ancient cores to build, and then it it also has a level 2 and a level 3, which will take additional resources, each one allowing you a different type of boat. This is a shrine. This is what a shrine looks like when it is unactivated. It's not been activated yet. It is a gray or silver star, as opposed to the gold star of the activated one. Now, if I activate this, it takes three second channel to activate this, unless you have the sneak activation hunter perk, which will change it to one second channel. And then you can activate it to fast travel to any other fast travel point that you have unlocked. So, hopefully, you know that this is the seed of Yggdrasil. This is the center of your operation here. This tree will uh, give a, out a pulse every few seconds that you may have noticed here uh, that will heal all players inside the village and also heal all of the gates in the village. And that healing pulse will be bigger depending on how many souls the tree has. So if you keep the tree in blue health, you will get maximum healing. When it drops low enough, it will turn yellow and the pulse will get weaker, or even red and the pulse will get at its weakest, and then any lower than that and, well, you've lost the game. Ideally, this has helped you understand how the village works in Tribes of Midgard. Once again, I am 
Rump Fist. Hopefully, I will see you in Midgard.